In this chapter, we're going to study different statistical distributions. In this lesson, we just want to compare box and whisker plots to the normal distribution. Okay, hi everybody. So this is going to be just a, a quick little video just to well, draw your attention to something, okay? There's really not even a lot of math we're going to do in this. I just want to make sure that, that this is there for you to consider kind of as we, when you're done with this, you kind of look at this and go and move away from here and think, mm, okay, next time I, I see this, I'll, it's something I'm going I'm to think about here. One of the defining features of the normal distribution is this, is this bell-shaped curve, okay? Got this beautiful little bell curved um, and it, it, when we cut it with uh, the mean and then we go out standard deviations, okay, it cuts it beautifully. Uh, in these little um, intervals here where 68% is within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% is within two standard deviations of the mean, 99.7% of the standard devi of the population is within three standard deviations of the mean, okay? So, and that's true of any population that's normally distributed. Now, how steep this is can vary from population to population. Okay, so that'll vary based on the size of the standard deviation, but the, that shape, that overall bell shape will stay. Now, one of the things that's really interesting about this, this bell shape curve, is the symmetry. Okay, 50% of the data is below the mean and 50% is above the mean. Now, that should start to kind of ring a bell here, like, I mean, we, ha I just realized what I just said there. Anyway, bell curve, ring a bell. Anyway, that was a terrible math joke. Um, but there's, there's something familiar about this. So what it says here is, as illustrated above, the proportion of the population within one standard deviation is roughly 68%. Okay, okay. well, maybe that's not quite the, the clear connection that I want, but it's close to something we've seen be before here, okay? In some ways, this corresponds to a box and whisker plot. Because remember, the box and whisker plot, we identify the median and then we go to the lower quartile and the upper quartile. Now, granted, this is supposed to represent 50% of the data, okay? N not, not that 68, uh, what is it, like, I think it's even like 68 point eh, whatever percent here, but that's not what it is. But that's not too far off. And then we've got these, these, uh, this other 25% out here and this other 25% out here. But then what we do, okay, is we introduce the, um, that little bit of a boundary that we used for, for looking for um, outliers. So we get the interquartile range. And remember, we multiply this by 1.5. And if we come back that amount here, then these are your outliers. Okay? If we go forward that much here, and then out here, these are your outliers. And so we can sort of compare that to the bell curve. And in fact, that's what I want to do. I want to show you this diagram right here where we've got our, our median, Q1, Q2, uh, sorry, Q3. You can sort of see how they match up. That's 50% of the, the data, but this is 68% if I go one standard deviation out here. But now if I go, uh, if I go the first quartile minus uh, 1.5 times the interquartile range. I get out here, and that is roughly, take a look at that here, 2.7 standard deviations back from the mean. Forward, that's 2.7 standard deviations forward from the mean. Okay, where the mean is straight down the middle there. And so I can I can take that, that uh, box and whisker part, uh, plot here, and there's some nice kind of comparisons in, in in terms of the, the, the distribution of data on the, the normal distribution or the bell curve and what we're seeing here. Now you gotta play with it a little bit to make it perfect, but, but still. Now, this is really the important point that we wanna get to. And I'll just read this off for you here. This suggests that if our box and whisker plot uh, possesses symmetry about the mean, that there's good reason to think that the data might be normally distributed. However, that's not necessarily the case. And I'm going to show you an example of, of a distribution that is actually going to have a very similar um, box and whisker plot that will be uh, symmetric, but I'm still not, I'm still not normally distributed. Here, I've got two peaks in the data, okay? Okay, so there's, there's these, these two 
parts where there's a lot of data here, a lot of data here, and it drops off in between. The box and whisker plot for that particular set of data is going to look something like this. Still got the median uh, right down the middle. And as long as those peaks are symmetrically um, located on either side of the of this the the mean here, or, or the median in, in this case would be the same thing, um, my box and whisker plot is going to be symmetric. So okay, so just because the box and whisker plot is symmetric doesn't necessarily mean that the data is normally distributed, but it is a pretty good indication that it might be and that it could be something that you should be looking for uh, when you see a problem that, that has that property to it.